lighten up the damn show because we've been talking, you know, it's been a little heavy. And let's talk about Ricky Martin feet. <laughs> His foot fetish. But before we do that, can we just uh can we can we have a moment and just salivate over this fine ass man? Cause Ricky is single. He's 50. What is he? 50, 51. Oh my god, this man is fine. Come on. Uh, but look, okay, let me stop being a hoe. <laughs> This is from his GQ magazine in the issue with the cover. There's a lot of pictures up in there. I posted on my social medias, but if you want, you can go to Ricky's Instagram and check out the pictures. But child, I was like, ooh, Ricky can get it. But anyway, so he is opening about uh, he's opening up about his love for feet. And he's become he's very unapologetic about who knows it. So now the Living La Vida Loca singer who a man who announces divorce from husband of six years, Juan Yosef, last year, admitted in a new interview that he does have a foot thing, but he refuses to feel uncomfortable about it because we all have something we fetishize. He says, I love feet. I have a foot thing. I love foot massages, and I will kiss your feet like crazy for hours. But we all have something. Some have a fetish for armpits. Mm-hmm. My friend Miguel. Miguel Jose, um, <laughs> we're not supposed to see. But those of y'all who know him from, you know, when we talk and stuff on social media, so I'm sure y'all see him in my comments every now and again. He loves in some armpits. That's like one of his fetishes. And you can't have deodorant and stuff on either. So that's like his kink. And Ricky is right. We all have our kinks. I'll even admit, I like feet at times, but they got to be pretty. They got to be clean and manicured. Pedicured. Because pedicure is feet. They got to be properly pedicured. No fungus, none of that shit. Because you ain't going to have my throat closing up. I'm already sick as it is. <laughs> but anyway, so yes. One of the things I love about um, Ricky is that he's openly admitting it. And Ricky got some pretty ass feet, too. I'm sure y'all seen the pictures of his feet online. Like, good bone structure up in the, in the you know, in the toes. And them, to them toes, you know, straight. Very much straight. Like, no kind of, they ain't crooked. And toes ain't giving gang signs and all that shit. Like, his feet don't look like this. They look like this. <laughs> okay, let me not be a messy and, and get serious. So he also said, um, well, oh, so then he's also no stranger to sharing snaps of himself shirtless. So just in boxers or trunks, but a handful of posts, he's made sure that his feet are the main focus. In one post of January 2023, he zoomed up close to his toes as he enjoyed... Um, pedicure time. Unsurprisingly, the comment section was filled with thirsty people fawning over his pretty feet and sharing the foot emoji. You know what he needed to do? Don't, um, Erica, I mean, um, not Erica, um, Evelyn, because they pretty much, in my opinion, the same damn person. I'll go say Erica Mena, Lozada. But Evelyn Lozada has a OnlyFans where she just posts her feet. Maybe Ricky needed to do the same damn thing. Because, you know, this man out here with foot fetishes, like I said, I mean, I don't know if I've been. I was like, I like toes and stuff too, but yeah, they gotta be, they gotta be cute or whatever. And I really have to be into you. So it's like, if I'm tearing your booty up, I know it's probably gonna be graphic. If I'm tearing that booty up and that sex is so damn good and you so fine and I got you in the missionary position and you deserve, like, I will literally put your toes in my mouth. But let's keep it PG 13. So that was just a little, <laughs> but anyway. So as whether he shares photos of his feet specifically for his fans, he replied, let me like this comment and say, I like your feet. I have no fans. I have fans who can draw my feet like a piece of art. They write to me, Ricky, I can recognize your feet a mile away. And I think also what it is is that he looks at human anatomy. He looks at the male body as like a work of art. And that's why his body has been in shape for as long as it's had. And he looks so young for his age of being in his 50s. He's aging gracefully, like him, Jennifer Lopez. A lot of them look pretty good for, you know, for their age, which goes to show aging nothing but a number. It's probably got, he got some melanin up in him too, and he eats well and all that other stuff. Now, the more serious though, the She Bangs hit maker who came out publicly as gay in 2010 also talked about his rough coming out experience, including the time controversial journalist Barbara Walters pressured him over his sexuality during an interview in 2000. Although Walters later apologized for pressing him on his sexuality, Martin says the experience left him feeling violated, saying that gave permission to every journalist to ask, Are you gay? I was like, I don't want to talk about this. I don't want people to know. I don't want know if it's internalized homophobia, but it was not my moment. But this is why I'm responding to things a little bit of time because I'm probably going to forget my train of thought. But I don't know if it was internalized homophobia. People need to realize that in the 90s, it was a lot different or the 2000s to be openly gay, especially as a male in pop music. And Ricky Martin was 
very good looking. He was on, well, still is, but back in those days, he was he's a good looking Latino male. You know that Latin machismo thing that they that we have in the community. There's a lot of that, and he's his career was just taking off, especially when he performed. What was it, The Cup of Life? I think he performed at the Grammys, and I think that was the year Madonna won the Grammy for Ray of Light. He got up on say, I think he opened the show. If I remember off the top of my head, he opened the show. That was the moment where it was like people just really finally saw Ricky for the star that he was. And America woke up and paid attention. The whole Latin explosion started. Madonna wanted to work with him and all this other stuff. So, and when you're at the height of your career, the last thing you want to do is be like coming out as gay and all that other mess, especially when you got people chirping in your ear. Oh, if you come out, your, your career is over. People still say that shit now, which it goes to show that that's not true. But, um, because there are many people out here who's having who's queer and and and, and has a career. Billy Porter's got a career. Lil Nas X has got a career. The, um, there's a a Latin rapper, a reggaeton artist that I like called La Cruz. He's openly gay. I like his music. His career is doing pretty well. There's a lot of people out here who's doing what needs to be done. But anyway, so um, yeah, she did open that up, and I could understand how that was at that time because people was not feeling gays back in the 2000s. So he also revealed that at the height of his fame, at the turn of the millennium, close friends told him coming out would end his career. He agreed that his success would have been the, wouldn't have been the same had he come out in 1999, but added, there's no light in the closet. Every time I see an adolescent coming out, I'm like, you're so lucky because you don't have to deal with this ever again. And I could totally, like I was saying, I, I can get that, but I don't think I pushed further is the fact that I don't think it was internalized homophobia. Or maybe it was a little bit, but at, but also it's just like people should have to. People should be. People should come out when they're ready. He wasn't ready at the time, so you have to give people the grace and the time and the moment to come into their own or come to terms with who they are as a person before they're like, okay, I'm ready and I'm comfortable enough to come out or whatever. And he didn't come out until like his career was set. So some people, some people do it that way. Some people come out at the height. It's all about bravery at the end of the day. So, um, in 2010, in a message to fans on his website, he came out as a proud and fortunate homosexual man. Reflecting on the message, he said, it felt amazing. Can you come out twice, three times? I wish I had done it before. Yesterday is forever beyond our control. There's nothing you can do. Um, about where we've lived. So he says that. I was like, oh, I want to open up. I was like, let me see if this works. Oh, did I switch it? Yes, I did, bitch. I was like, oh, that was the first time I did that. <laughs> we're trying to figure out, I was like, can I switch to another picture while I was doing, look at me, um, figuring out how to produce on the fly. So anyway, let me continue. So uh, Martin also recalled how when he was still closeted and on the verge of global superstardom, he tried to convince a partner that they should run away together and avoid the spotlight. He says, we were 20. I told him I'm going to quit everything. Let's move to Europe and just be. I don't care about this. He goes, your path is evidence. I see your future. I love you, but we can't. And it was good that that person saw that in him, but I would love to kind of have that. It's like, you know what? Let's run away together. I love you and all this other stuff. I will give up everything. Let's go move to, where would I move? either to Spain or Mykonos. That's, those would be my top two choices. And every now and again, when I want to really um, unleash my inner hoe, we go into Berlin, Germany. But anyway, so he said, the singer also said that he enjoyed being a, he enjoys being single now for the first time in years and is even having fun meeting guys at parties, but he's staying away from apps like Tinder and Grindr. I love the fact that, and you know what? I love that. I love the fact that he doesn't shy away from his sexuality and sex sexual desires, which, in my opinion, so many gay men do. And I love the fact that here's someone who is comfortable in his sexuality, being like, "If you got a fetish, embrace that fetish. Love that fetish. Don't be um don't be scared of your fetish or, or let people shame you into you liking feet. Or, in my opinion, I'd like feet, but my fetish is ass. Like, if you got a nice big booty, child, I'm gonna have, at some time I'm gonna have to put my mouth on it. No shade. I'm just saying. <laughs> I know it's a little TMI, but whatever. We're all grown and sexy in this room. So, um, with that being said, um, I'm glad, yeah, avoid Tinder grinding stuff because, you know, I know a lot of celebrities always say, oh, I got kicked off of Tinder or whatever the case is because people thought I was impersonating a celebrity. So, people don't even believe when it's really you. I mean, don't get me wrong. Maybe we need to introduce... Um, him the sniffies or blowers if you're into oral you know there's blowers there's um oh my oh then i just heard of a new one 
A friend of mine told me there's a new app that's similar. To, I said, you know, once Sniffy's come out with their little situation, everybody want to jump on with their own. So we got blowers, which is for the people who, who are oral linguists. And then we have people, and there's one called Backdoor. And I'm sure you can, under, you can pretty much guess <laughs> what Backdoor is for. Because uh, you in the words of, remember in the words of uh, Vivigal Fox, you can put that where? Back there. So... I wonder if that's what that is, just for, like, you want to just throw your ass in a circle, and that's all you want. It's just anal. Just come, you know, flood me out and then get out my house. So, I fail this to say, congratulations, Ricky. I love the fact that you are owning who you are, embracing your sexuality, because, you know, once you get in your 50s, I don't know, because I ain't there yet, but I'm looking forward to turning my 50s, where I can really turn up and not give a fuck what people think in regards of, like, how I live my life. Well, I kind of sort of don't now, but just, like, Owning your 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 being a man and being sexual and being free and you know it's like oh yeah this is the first time in a long time I felt like I really love being single so y'all think this might be like he's going through a midlife crisis it was the fact that you know what I'd rush into this whole thing with Juan I, maybe he had this idea of like oh I wanted to be, have a husband and all the children because I think they have like what four kids together well he has the twins with himself then he wound up having the two other kids with Juan but Juan embraced all the kids like they his own so uh, the other thing that maybe it was like with him or whatever it's like you know he liked the idea and the pompous circumstance of being a husband and being married and having the kids and trying to show heterosexual america or sh the straight community that oh yeah we can be married and we can have kids and we can do all these things and, and we and 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 show y'all that we could be married but, child, my, my whole goal in life is not to sit up out here trying to prove anything to anybody. At some point, I got to just do me and live my life. And you realize that marriage is not for everybody. Marriage is not an easy thing to navigate in this world. And now he's like, you know what? We can we can co-parent, but I like my freedom. Like, or what I remember, I, I don't know if, if Robert and I was, because we talk a lot about stuff. But I don't know if it was Robert, but... I think it was the fact that Ricky gives me very much that he wants an open relationship. I think Ricky gives me open relationship tease. He likes, he's a very sexual man, as most Puerto Ricans are. I've slept with enough of them to know this. <laughs> um, you know, he's a Puerto Rican man. You know, they have that high sex drive. And after a while, and it's no shade. This is why I can't do relationships either, because I'm going to be honest. I cannot have sex with the same person for the rest. Like when I look at my parents and I, I love them, but it's like y'all be fucking the same person for years. I'm like, I get, oh, I need, oh no, mm, I need new booty. Like we can be married and and, and like other things, but also we got to be able to invite somebody else in the bedroom. And I, I got to taste, you know, I, every now and again, you know, I love chocolate, but I don't want to just eat chocolate all the time. Every now and again, I want vanilla, I want a little strawberry, I want a little Neapolitan. You know, I, you got to switch it up. So you having sex with the same person. I'm like, okay, I already know your tics. I already know the things you like, all that stuff. But I just like, I like that that dopamine, that rush of just like trying different stuff. Because I don't really think by nature, we are conditioned to just be one person with one person for the rest of our lives. But if that's the avenue you choose, I'm not judging. But I'm just saying for me, it's just like, I need to taste the rainbow, like them Skittles. 